Coming up on Techzilla, Techzilla in space. Well, at least we're looking at it. Microsoft Live, where to go when Microsoft cuts you off. The worst set-top box ever. Motherboard codes, TiVo Love, and Sugar Sink. And Lori Grunin's back to talk the latest digital camera mayhem from Photokina. So heat up that deep fryer and batter up your Twinkies. Ugh, because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by Squarespace, Lucha Libre. Grab your mask and get directly into the ring with Los Heroes of Lucha Libre. Go to Assist Express. Support smarter with Go to Assist Express. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews, the latest tech, and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner, tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or what 442 means in the Oldsmobile 442 name, we've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll track down someone who does. Though I will say four-barrel carburetor, four on the floor, and dual exhaust means Mondo straight line acceleration. Four on the floor. Wait, awesome. that's great. Four on the floor. Four on the floor? I don't, I don't know. That just Are you throwing seems gang like the signs? right thing to do. What would happen maybe. last time you threw gang signs? It was only your incredible Awkward. Spanish skills that kept us from getting killed. <laughs> In any case, on to the news at hand, or I should say on to the news of products that almost are. Google TV announced on their blog, new content partners. Turner Broadcasting is going to be providing their most popular websites, websites, hmm, for viewing on Google TV, including TBS, TNT, CNN, Cartoon Network, and Adult Swim. So you got old movies, news, cartoons, and really funny cartoons that kids shouldn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> Viva los hermanos del Ventura! Woo! So is it actually the like what I couldn't figure out is if it's actually the content from their website in glorious HD, or is it just the Turner websites? I think it'll be the content. Oh, I hope so. That would optimized be, for, for TV viewing. That would be so horrible to be like, it. yeah, I'm going to watch me some freaking cart. What? The website? I yeah, can watch ew. it on what I channel? I can see that on my freaking yeah. laptop. Your TV guide. Yeah, and NBC Universal is serving up CNBC Real Time, oh, an application boy. that allows you to track your favorite stocks and access news feeds while enjoying the best financial news from CNBC directly on the TV screen. Yeah, it should be good for those ticker tape junkies and people who gleam financial info from uh, CNBC. Is that, again, overlay Myself or an actual live video feed? Well, wow, you're, you're too busy working to watch CNBC during the day. I'm too busy making money to be reading about money. And sure. HBO is going to give access to hundreds of hours of programming through HBO Go. Subscribers will soon be able to access all of their favorite HBO content on demand in an enhanced website for Google TV. Hopefully this will include recent episodes of their current ongoing series like uh, True Blood, which I didn't see the end of, or Entourage, the last season, which I didn't see the end of, or Boardwalk Empire. And they will offer non-HBO cable subscribers or satellite subscribers the ability to access the content. I will pay HBO to see Entourage. I ain't buying cable to see Entourage, which may mean I'm waiting for the DVDs. Hmm. I have cable, but I don't have HBO, but Ergo, I would like to you, in, in some cases, you situation. can't, yeah. Well, hopefully they will allow non-cable or satellite subscribers to get their content. Yes, that's Please. what I'm hoping for. Please, HBO? Yeah, and for you b-ballers out there, NBA is offering NBA Game Time. Uh, it's basically an application that lets you follow game scores in real time and catch up on the latest highlights from your favorite team in HD, which Ooh. is nice. Yeah, and uh, Google has partnered with Amazon Video On Demand for access to over 75,000 titles for rent or purchase, and Netflix with their instant streaming service. I just want to say, I love what you're doing with Netflix. I love what you're doing with Amazon. I would love you to add Voodoo onto that list because their streaming stuff looks amazing. Yeah. And in non-Google-related news, Microsoft announced that Windows Phone 7 will be launching October 11th in New York City with, wait for it, T-Mobile. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming. I thought AT&T yeah. was going to be the exclusive partner in Not that situation. AT &T. I was going to say, I thought, no AT&T at all, just No, AT&T still. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're still going to have their phone. I'm but T-Mobile sure. is the T lead partner. Is going to be the badass in the situation. AT&T is obviously still paying a lot of money to keep uh, uh, the iPhone around, maybe? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who cares? Yeah, so, yeah. We're curious to see whether or not our friends at Microsoft can finally hit a yeah, mobile a phone operating in the system mail today. adopted in volume. Got a mail phone in the mail today. I was hoping it was going to be a Windows 7 phone. No, it was the Aria again. Is that, you're sure it's not Windows 7? I'm, I'm, yeah. Did you check? No, but I mean, it's not. Because All the Windows 7 phones, I've, the one I've seen has been great. 
Daniel writes in, actually you should read this question. Okay, Daniel writes in, I would like you to review Celestron Sky Scout Personal Planetarium. Daniel, Andy links to the Amazon page. Um, didn't you review this back at CES, what was it, 2006-ish? Ish, yeah. Ish, somewhere this, it's in the a past five years. It's a funny device. I, I gotta fess up. I picked this question because I've been stalking telescope websites lately. Please, somebody talk me out of buying an eight or ten inch Dobson telescope, especially one of the cool DIY carbon fiber ones that weigh under twenty pounds, it can be disassembled and begged to be carried in the middle of nowhere where there's no so, light yeah, pollution. The Sky Scout. Right. Sorry. Scout. Okay. Review is a strong word. If you've never heard of the Sky Scout before, it's a Celestron box. It's it's a tube. It's like having an astronomer in a tube. Um, Serafina picked this as one of her wish list gadgets for last year's holiday season. This particular tube, yeah. which is not a telescope, I want to make that very clear. This is not a telescope. It's this, not a telescope. This is a tube, right? So you have your tube. It's got a, a stupid, simple interface and GPS, and you use it to identify or locate objects in the night sky. It's really simple. You point the Sky Scout at a star in the sky and click the target button, and it tells you what you're looking at. I remember this. Yeah. 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 It was cool. Or, or you can like you know go to the menu on the side, which is a very sort of 1980s bleeding edge technology feel. Select its name for the menu and follow the directional arrows. It'll be like no, 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 left, no, 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 right, no, 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 left. Little, <laughs> little red arrows tell you up and down until you actually have it centered in the viewfinder. And the Sky Scout tube basically tells you where it's there. I got to hold it, I got to point it, and I got to wish that I could see anything in the night sky above Las Vegas other than blinky lights from ginormous casino buildings. There are I, lots of those. <laughs> yes, and they will blind you if you look at one in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, I know a bunch of folks that have these, they love them, but it is a quirky device, or as a recent purchaser on Amazon declared, a grand gadget flawed by a few warts which is a great quote. Uh, updating the firmware on it is a pain in the ass. The GPS takes forever, like a minute or two to launch. Sometimes it just won't launch. You sort of need to relaunch the entire unit to get it to find the satellites. It's got built-in batteries that the GPS can chew through, so shut it off when you aren't actually locating or identifying stuff. It's really, really cool and really kid-friendly. And if I had a Celestron computerized telescope, I might buy it so we could run, you know, Wii tours for the family, swinging the scope from star to star, like using the Sky Scout, and then the, the telescope will zoom in on the, the star. But the thing is, I have an iPhone. And for three to 19 bucks on the iPhone, there's Distant Sun, Star Walk, Star Map Pro, and a ton of other tools that make it super easy to point your phone or your iPad in the direction you're looking. Not quite as exact as the tube that you point at the sky, but faster, easier to navigate, and there's a lot more information inside this, in my humble opinion. Matter of fact, you can buy all of those and a very entry-level telescope or decent binoculars for le an entry-level decent. Don't be like, you can't spend less than $500 and get an appropriate pair of binoculars for viewing the night sky, Mr. Norton, um, <laughs> for less than the cost of a Sky Scout. Though, if you don't have an iPhone or an iPod Touch or an Android phone, uh, then, then it's not so much of a deal, right? But I gotta say, um, and by the way, if you want to have some fun, check out Celestron's Tweed Little First Scope. It lists for 50 bucks, sells for under 40. It's a little tiny 76 millimeter Dobbsian. Um, I, I gotta say, you know, if you have a smartphone, check out the star finding applications for that. I think they'll be a better deal. Anyhow, this is also why I'm thinking about buying a, a much more serious telescope, because I'm tired of pointing my binoculars at the sky. Yeah, I think that would make you very happy. Yes. Um, got some Android astronomy apps or a slightly used telescope only used to watch Pluto on Sundays that you want to perhaps sell Patrick? Email Texilla at revision3.com. Coming up next, Lori Grunin is back to talk digital cameras and new tech from Photokina. But first... I want to tell you about Squarespace, people. One of our sponsors where I host my personal website. It is an amazing, super flexible way for anybody to create an amazing website. I don't care if it's a blog, a personal portfolio, whatever. You want to get a store? No matter what kind of level of coding experience you got, Squarespace, they have tools to make it easy for anybody, even coding morons like me, to create a high-end, complex website that is uniquely your own. Hey, you know what? Don't worry if you got any questions at 2 in the morning, because Squarespace, they offer every single user 24-7 support. And they offer every single user an iPhone application. It's been updated, by the way. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's got some nifty new features. Full HTML blog editing on the go. Comment moderation. Get push notifications to approve comments, mark existing comments as spam, reply to your comments, and quite a bit more, all inside your iPhone. Some of the most highly traffic web pages on the internet are powered by Squarespace, not to mention Veronica Belmont's very own Sword and Laser podcast homepage, living on the Squarespace. You, if you have a web page, you should be checking out Squarespace. Squarespace.com to learn more. Do yourself a favor, you get a two week free trial. Enter the code TechZilla when you check out. You can score 10% off for the lifetime of your order. That is a deal, people, and it doesn't ever go away like that. 
Photo Kina, the world's largest photography trade show, just went down, and there's always a ton of announcements. We asked CNET senior editor for digital imaging, Lori Grunin, to come back and break down the whole scene for us. Welcome back, Lori. Hello. So last time you were on the show, you laid out the new offices from Canon, Nikon, Sony, Olympus, Panasonic. Now it looks like the, the, the fall models are out. Yep. I mean, uh, and actually, to me, fall is always the more interesting season of announcements because they're, they tend to be the higher end models. So that's when you get the, uh, you know, the around $1,200 SLRs and, as you've said, the new mirrorless, uh, another set of mirrorless cameras as well as the enthusiast compacts and stuff like that. What's most interesting, the, the new mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras or the fact that everybody's starting to add GPS and HDR features or are those just cup holders <laughs> that we can't use? Um, <laughs> GPS, not a, I, I actually didn't see a lot of people adding GPS. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I can only think of one manufacturer that added it, Casio. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, Nikon took GPS out of their new, um, the the P7000, which uh -huh. replaces the P6000. The P6000 had GPS and the P7000 doesn't. I think GPS is important. I think geotagging is important. Mm -hmm. um, I think iFi uh, helps, uh, but I don't think it's really caught on uh, the way it should. I think there's still usability issues and, you know, um, stuff like that. What the HDR features we're seeing being added mm -hmm. are really kind of HDR for dummies things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the automatically uh, combining three shots into one with the broader tonal range is nice, and it's a nice feature as long as it's properly implemented, like I think Sony does a good job with it. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're talking about people who like to shoot HD, shoot for HDR, you're still, um, you're, you're still seeing only three bracket, three mm -hmm. shot bracketing. Whereas, you know, you really need five or seven if you're a real HDR enthusiast. So, well, for the, for the HDR, the, the HDR for dummies, as you called it, which I, I like putting it that way, are they actually giving you access to the separate images or are they just grabbing the three brackets, smirching them together and saving them onto the memory? Save, they are, okay. Smirching and saving, as you would say. Yeah, it's, it's been, <laughs> it's, I've been laughing because I've been playing around with the HDR and the iPhone, which A, you know, either I'm not photographing the right stuff or it's not very good HDR and B, it's always really fun while your iPhone sits there and churns for about 30 seconds after you take a picture. That's what it's like, <clears throat> that's what it's like with the cameras too. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah, I mean, it takes 10, it, actually I would say seven to 10 seconds in cases to save the image. And you're like, la, 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 la. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's just irritating. Fuji's, <laughs> Fuji's got a new high-end point and shoot, $1,000 for a fine pix, the X100. Um, well, it's really sort of, it's an enthusiast compact in like the Canon G12, mm -hmm. Um, that sort of, uh, the uh, Panasonic LX5, that class of cameras. $1,000 is a lot. They've gone very retro with the design. Um, they have, what seems to be really whizzy about it is the viewfinder. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it has an optical viewfinder. Which <laughs> is it like a range old. finder, like old school Leica? Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> um, so, but it's there and it makes, and that makes a difference. It does mm -hmm. this overlay though, so that you get more information than you would with this, the regular, you know, not through the lens viewfinders. Interesting. Uh, and it's really retro design and it, yeah, definitely very much a niche product, but. You're not buying into the, I also want to be in the 70s camera design, are you? Um, actually, I really like the design. It's more like, yeah, we'll see how the image quality is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good plan. Samsung's <laughs> NX100, what's going on with Samsung these days? Um, the NX100 is their, you know, now their cheaper mirrorless camera to mm -hmm. follow on to like the NX10 um, and the NX5, which we didn't get here in America. Um, it's actually, I kind of like the design. I think it's very attractive and, and they do this new thing with the lens where um, based on the characteristics of the lens, when you attach it, it feeds back into the camera and the camera knows so, you know, like, oh, this is a wide angle lens, so I'll set the scene modes appropriately. And I, I mean, I like the design of the camera. Mm -hmm. It's about the size of the Olympus EPL-1 and it's that same class. Um, um, that, that category doesn't seem to have really taken off in America, mm -hmm. so we'll see. How's Samsung been holding up in terms of image quality for their basic cameras? They're, they're actually pretty competitive. Uh, they don't really stand out mm -hmm. amazing. They don't have great performance. They don't have great image quality, but they have nice camera designs and and they're competitive in all the other aspects. So.
Any any big lens announcements at Photokina? Actually, Canon um, is is uh, with some of their longer telephotos um, have been adding features for you know friendlier HD videography, mm -hmm. uh, things that you don't have on traditional DSLR lenses like stop points for focus, so that you can oh, wow. so you can do rack focusing. They also announced a a nice fisheye lens that I can't wait to use. Um, of course, no prices, and, and a bunch of these are really are professional lenses, like uh, the Nikon, I believe, replaced its 35 millimeter f1.4. It's $1,800, but it's a really nice lens. <laughs> Panasonic's GH2, uh, anything good going on with the follow-on to the GH1? Um, yeah, I mean, they've made some updates that, you know, it's supposed to be faster. Ooh. Faster autofocus, um, things like that. Any bargains that stand out right now in your mind, like your top five bargains in the digital camera market right now? Point uh, and shoot, uh, DSLR? Bargain, I mean, the. it's not so much bargains as models that have always been really good deals, like the Pentax KX. Okay. Um, you may be able to get some bargains on the K7 because they announced the K5. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sony has dropped their uh, S tends to drop their SLR prices, um, but it's a mess there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like should we should we wait until Black Friday and see what the holiday bargains are? Yeah, absolutely. I really think that's your best bet. Lori, can we ask you to come back with sort of your top, you know, point and shoot pocket size cameras a little later this year as the the so bargain prices kick in? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, end of October. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves a holiday shopping guide, especially oh, Lori, who's going to be sorting next through. Next Friday. <laughs> ten thousand. Oh boy, who is sorting through ten thousand digital cameras, ladies and gentlemen? Lori Grunin, thank you so much, Lori. You can find Lori's work and all of the camera, well, basically reviews she edits and writes herself. There's good stuff there, people. CNET.com, digital photography is an excellent resource. What's the exact, is there a, is there a landing page for the? Yes, yes, it's reviews.cnet.com slash digital, digital hyphen cameras. <laughs> I'm gonna let her say that. <laughs> Glory, thank you so much. Did somebody say speed round? We're dealing with machines that won't boot, set-top boxes that won't do anything, and the dreaded battle between the G4 PowerBook and Snow Leopard. But first, Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Do you fancy yourself a luchador? Flying off turnbuckles and grappling with your opponent? Then grab your mask and get directly into the ring with Los Héroes de Lucha Libre. Heroes of the Ring delivers an authentic bilingual gaming experience that mimics move for move the brute strength and gravity-defying acrobatics of real-life Lucha Libre. Start following the game today by becoming a fan on Facebook at facebook.com slash aaaheroes or following Heroes on Twitter at aaaheroes for all the latest news and video updates. Pre-order by October 12th and receive an authentic AAA licensed Lucha mask to wear at play, at work, or wherever you want. Because it's not just wrestling, it's Lucha Libre. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Momondo. If you need to search for flights fast and want to include as many carriers and booking sites as possible, take a stop at momondo.com. This travel mega search engine scours over 450 sites to find you the cheapest airline tickets out there. Their search includes major airlines, tiny no-frills carriers, all the major travel booking sites like Orbitz and Kayak, and more. You can see how many different sites are offering the same price and then choose where you want to book it. If you're a student looking for cheap airfare across Europe, you're definitely in luck. They list the small carriers that have special deals for students, so you won't have to break the bank to take that European finding yourself trip. If you're looking for hotels and rental cars too, Momondo has you covered. You can even check out their city guides for the info on the places you're looking to travel to all over the world. So find your next trip in a flash at momondo.com. And thanks to Keith and Nathan and Google Buzz for the suggestion. Deontay writes in from Philadelphia. Hey, Techzilla, my motherboard was working fine this morning, but when I went to start it up this evening, it froze. After a hard reboot, it would no longer boot or show video. The monitor is working fine. I even tried switching out the GPU and motherboard, 
Hmm. But the error persists. I'm going to assume you switched out the GPU and not the motherboard. The digital readout on the motherboard itself displays the code FF, which means boot as described in the user manual. Can you tell me what could be the error? Or does this mean I need to get a new CPU or RAM? Thanks for the help, Deontay in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hmm. Unfortunately, we don't know what brand of MOBO you've got, Deontay. Um, when some motherboard display the FF code on yeah. their LED panels, it means there's probably a power problem, which could mean that your power supply has taken a hit and can't power the cards. On others, it means that the MOBO has completed the post test successfully, which might mean that your hard drive has died. Try inserting a boot disk into the DVD drive. If it boots and you get a screen, then there's problems with that hard drive. If that isn't the case, you really need the manual for your motherboard and a speaker connected to the speaker output to get all the info your motherboard might be singing out. Uh, there's a pretty awesome system won't boot and no video output checklist up in the forums at Tom's Hardware that will walk you through diagnosing this. Some of it doesn't apply to you though because this isn't a system you just built, but it does have a lot of useful info there. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you also might want to go through and make sure you're, you know, for some reason, in case maybe you hit your machine or you think a smaller mm -hmm. creature in your house may have hit the machine, make sure the RAM is seated, make sure the cards are seated, but I'm, it smells like a, a either a corruption on the, on the hard drive or a drive failure. All right, well, sorry, dude. Dude. Next question. Hi, I have recently purchased the Acrian Play on HD player. Uh, I think that's how we pronounce it. I purchased this player because I want to stream online content such as YouTube, Hulu, Dailymotion, etc. on my TV. But the community projects in the Acrian forums are hard to understand as I'm not a techie or have any knowledge of Linux. So, I'm wondering if you guys can help me out. Thanks, Gizmo Freak. Sorry, I had to run onto the other set where this Hello. was sitting. Yes. Never pay 150 pounds, that's about $240 US. That's a lot of money for any set-top box or device without knowing how it works first or will work within your home network and system. Seriously, dude, gizmo freak, I'd return this thing or sell it. Yeah. What you want is an Apple TV or a Windows Media Center box, which Windows Media Center, easy to configure, Apple TV, even easier to configure, simple, well-documented, supports YouTube, Hulu, gonna require a Roku box when it's released or a home theater PC like one running Windows Media Center. Please, research before you buy. Buying obscure and complicated community, it's just, dude, I, I, I feel for you, but I spent some time in the forum, gibberish. It looks like a fascinating box, but I think you need to step down to something that's comfortable to set up, that's easy to set up. And before you buy any set-top box, make a list of what you want to do with that set-top box before you commit to anything. And then when we make our giant Excel document of all the features <laughs> of all the set-top boxes, you'll have something to check up against. <laughs> that will never happen. Kieran writes in, hello, I bought a G4 PowerBook off eBay with a 1.25 gigabytes of RAM and a 1.33 gigahertz PowerPC G4 processor. I also bought a retail copy of Leopard, but when I put the disc in the drive, it just spits it back out. Could this be because it's a dual layer disc? Please help me, I need to run Leopard on this computer. By the way, I'm running 10.4 at the moment. Kieran in Gloucester, England. Gloucester, Gloucester. Gloucester. I hate to be the one to tell you this, Kiernan, but Snow Leopard, and I got, I'm assuming you bought Snow, if you bought it recently, I'm assuming you bought Snow Leopard, is Intel processor machines only. Leopard, which I doubt you bought if you just bought it, in theory should run on your PowerBook, uh, but it sounds like your DVD drive might be damaged. Uh, my understanding is the PowerBook with like more than 512 megabytes of RAM and a gigahertz or faster processor, I think like 867 hertz or better, it should run. It should run if it's Leopard. There's no way it's going to run if it's Snow Leopard. And I would try other DVDs and see whether or not your drive can read them. If it spits them out, then it sounds like it's a problem with your DVD drive and you should borrow an external drive or get into the crazed mayhem of replacing a G4. PowerBook drive. Yeah, that was my problem. Not with my, it wasn't a PowerBook, but my last MacBook Pro had a really bad DVD mm -hmm. issue, and it would just spit out discs all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I don't know what the deal with that was, but it could be could be a similar kind of issue. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and yeah, and where would you get a copy of Leopard these days? I guess you might be able to get an old copy also off of Maybe eBay. Maybe at the jumble. I think that's a British word for like garage sale. <laughs> a jumble. <laughs> Next question. Jim writes in, I'm confused about something. When you mention set-top boxes, you mention names like the PS3, Xbox, Roku, Apple TV, etc. But I've never heard you mention a TiVo. I use my TiVo HD as my set-top box, but it sits under the TV to watch <laughs> Netflix movies, Amazon rentals, YouTube, Texilla, and the content stored on my iMac movies songs and iTunes, video podcasts, etc. Not sure if it's on purpose or if it's one of those that came in under the radar. Thanks, Jim in Fort Lauderdale. Well, 
I, I don't think it's under the radar. Yeah. I don't think that's the issue. The TiVo that's exactly. getting Hulu Plus. I could have sworn I mentioned the TiVo. Did I not mention the TiVo we, last we, week? I think it's so yeah. obvious that we just kind of forget to say it. Uh, I, I don't, my buddy Robert Heron, here's the thing about the TiVo for me, right? My buddy Robert Heron loves his TiVo premiere. Of course, he lives for his cable television connection, which is the primary attraction for a TiVo, the ability to use its DVR functionality. That's why TiVo exists. Robert was also willing to pay out the wazoo that's uh, technical for posterior for the lifetime subscription. And while I like the TiVo's interface, I ain't paying monthly for it. And most of the folks who email us are not looking for a box that works with cable TV. They want to replace cable TV or satellite with their set top, or as you point out, under set box. Um, you know, it's it, it, a lot of television shows aren't going to come to to the internet, although that could be changing based on the Google TV release. But uh, we hope they're coming to the internet. Maybe if if the cable and and DSL companies don't cap us down to like eight gigabytes a month. I have a TiVo Series 3, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Mm -hmm. I, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but it does the job pretty yeah. well. I have, a, I have a ton of cable card issues. I don't know if it's a Comcast thing or if it's the cable <laughs> reacting very weirdly to the right. cable card. I mean, the TiVo acting weirdly to the cable cards. Um, but we have this issue all the time where this gray screen pops up and Ooh. we have to refresh and we've sent the issue to TiVo and they don't know what's going on. Right. So if anyone else out there has been having that <laughs> problem, I would love to send more examples to TiVo to show them what the hell is going on with the cable card. Yeah. But I digress. Yeah, it's time it, to thank one of our sponsors. Oh. <laughs> if you work with clients and colleagues to resolve computer issues, I have an incredible remote support tool that will make you look like a hero while saving you time and money and boosting productivity. Go to Assist Express, brought to you by Citrix, lets you easily resolve computer issues in real time or after hours while your customers are away from their computers, allowing you to be more productive. In fact, on average, go to Assist Express users report a 40% increase in productivity. That's like getting two extra workdays back a week. Texilla viewers can try Go to Assist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash Texilla. That's gotoassist.com slash Texilla for a free trial. XSD wrote in asking, I'm a longtime user of MSN Live. I had my life on the site for years. Links, pics, RSS, video, diary, goals, etc. Now that they've merged with WordPress, I've lost it all. Now, being a new Mac fan overnight, what software could you suggest for diaries and journals where I can safely store my day-to-day -day life offline? XSD. All right, well, you have a lot of options, which include, of course, just writing in pages or in a text document. You could then password protect the file or folder under the sharing options on the info tab. Um, however, it sounds to me like you're looking for something a little more dedicated to the task of journaling. I downloaded and tested an app called My Life, which is free for OS X. It lets you create multiple diaries, which can then be password protected if you'd like. You can add images, change the fonts, create a table of contents, and even export the entire diary out to rich text, HTML, or as a Microsoft Doc. You can also back up the entire thing to a zip file if you'd like. Um, if you want to pay a little money for a fuller experience, try Mac Journal. For $39.95, you can add QuickTime movies, audio clips, other files, and publish, if you want, to most of the major blogging platforms out there. Um, I know you want to stay offline, but this way you could have a local backup and automatic online updates if you want to. It also has a full screen mode, so you won't get distracted when you're trying to write. There are also versions for the iPad and iPhone, but they're not, unfortunately, Unfortunately, free with the purchase of the desktop app. Hmm. Yeah. Do you use any online journaling or offline journaling for that matter? Uh, I, I, I have a website. You have a website. <laughs> Do you? Yes. I don't it's know what your website is. It's just been rebuilt again. We'll talk about it in a oh. future episode. Okay. It's being populated right now. Yeah. You want to read the next email? <laughs> I need big time help. I email out a monthly newsletter to about 360 of my members. I'm faced with a problem. My computer has Windows 7 and I use Microsoft Office Pro 2007, but many of my members still run XP or Windows 2000. And when they receive my newsletter, it comes to them in a windmail.dat file and they can't read it. How can I fix this problem? Robert. Oh, it's time to change your format. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this could be, you know, you can do this per email recipient, or you can just do it in bulk. Um, you just need to change the default sending mode to plain text, I think, which pretty much everyone can read. But then you get rid of the shiny graphics and the sparkling GIFs and whatever else you pack into You well, hate HTML. Look at that look. <laughs> <laughs> I like plain text. Um, to do this, all you have to do is go to the Tools menu, click Options, and then click the Mail Format tab. Um, in the Compose in this Message Format list, click 
pick the format that you want, which would probably be plain text, um, you should be good to go. If there's any other options out there that work, you could probably test that out right. as well. Um, but you want to get on a format that kind of everyone can use. The lowest common denominator exactly. is really useful in email. And tell your, your, your mail people to upgrade. It's time to move on from Windows to Okay. If anyway. it works, don't fix it. But it doesn't work that good. <laughs> Apparently it works well enough. Just anyway, <laughs> final email. X marks a fantastic cross-platform, cross-browser bookmark syncing utility is shutting down as of January 10th, 2011. Oh, no. As unhappy as I was to hear the news, there is something interesting to come out of it. The X marks blog post mentions SugarSync. SugarSync is actually an online storage service akin to Dropbox. They offer 30, 60, 100, 250, and a 500 gigabyte plan available for a special introductory price of $39.99 a month or $399.99 a year. Compared to Dropbox's 100 gigabyte limit, this 500 gigabyte offering may encourage Dropbox to hit the one terabyte mark. <laughs> there are some oddities with the service. Linux, no, Android, yes, that but the capacity odd. and long list of features make it attractive to some. Quentin D. Well, that's a total bummer. So does SugarSync actually do the same bookmark syncing that, that X marks? Because the whole point I mean, of X marks it's like, was... It's kind of like how Evernote is something that's cross-platform and you can kind of save your you stuff You can use it for it. everything! Yeah, yeah. Uh, X marks was really popular among mm -hmm. a lot of my geeky friends, so it's kind of a bummer. Um, but thanks for the tip about SugarSync. Mm -hmm. The team also recommended Evernote, as we said, Firefox Sync, Chrome Sync, Windows Live Essentials, and MobileMe for your bookmark syncing needs. Hmm. It's sad when, when things go dead. Uh, 12 seconds.tv also went dead today. Hmm. Did you ever use 12 seconds? I did not use that it one. Was a, it was a fun service, and yeah. it's, it's sad when things kind of, you know. Which happens don't here get the support in Silicon they need. Valley. Yeah. Wow. There's or a lot of stuff out there. Don't, yeah, this is where they get, you know. Unfortunately, market. market business reality plan change. Future sold technology. We're looking for jobs, um, which hopefully we aren't, and hopefully you aren't. And uh, hey, X marks. I'm so sorry. Hey, for everybody watching, we live on your emails, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech L product reviews, how to's, you ask us, we'll do it. But we need those emails, people, so don't be shy. Send them to techzilla at revision3.com, especially if you have a telescope you're getting rid of. Especially. <laughs> Even better, send us in a video question of your telescope. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Okay, this telescope. will just have to be about telescopes. <laughs> uh, just keep it to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with a video question in the subject line. And as always, make sure you check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash techzilla and our forums at revision3.com slash forums. Or our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash T-E-K-H-D. Tech HD. Tech HD. Yes. Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. I'd like you to review Celestron, Celestron, Sky Celestron. Scout, Cel Celestron. Sorry. Daniel writes in, I would like you to review Celest, no, Celestron. All right! Daniel writes in, I would like you to review Cel... <laughs> Do you have earwax buildup like Veronica I Belmont? I don't have earwax! Do what Veronica Belmont did. I just have sensitive ears and they get tickles. Wax be gone. Hey. That's scary. Okay. Roger Chang is being catty, catty. Roger Chang is being catty in the control room. Catty in the control room. Catty in the control room. Roger Chang is a catty. At least when he's in the control room. <laughs> I am not Stevie Nicks. Three. <laughs> no bloopers. Best. Bloopers, no bloopers ever. I will quit if that goes in the bloopers. <laughs>